Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be looking at the CSEC English A May June 2015 paper one but this video is part two. So if you haven't watched part one yet as yet there is a card somewhere on this video you can go right ahead and click it and watch it or you can check in the description box below to watch part one. Also, if you're visiting the channel for the first time, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. Yes, thank you. And turn on your notification bell so that you know when new videos are being uploaded. Also, give this video a thumbs up by liking the video because that does well in allowing YouTube to put this content to others so that they can get to watch it. Okay, let us get into this paper, part two. So items 21 and 28 says, read the following poem carefully and then answer items 21 to 28 on the basis of what is stated or implied. So we'll be looking at our comprehensions and our poem. So this is a poem, it's entitled Flowers. It says, I have never learned the names of flowers from beginning my world has been a place of potholed streets where thick sluggish gutters race. In slow time, away from garbage heaps and sewers, past balanced out houses around which cowers stagnant earth. There scarce green things grew to chase, the dull gray squalor of sick dust. No trace of plant, save few sparse weeds. Just these, no flowers. One day they cleared a space and made a park there in the city slums and suddenly came stark glory like lightning in the dark while perfume and dark petals thundered slowly. I learnt no names but you shape and scent mark my mind even now with symbols holy. So 21 says, the speaker in the poem is A, a child playing, B, an adult dreaming, C, a child remembering, or D, an adult remembering. We know it is D, it is an adult remembering. So these are answer. 22 says, how does the speaker feel about flowers? A, odd, B, indifferent, C, enamored, or D, appreciative. We know the answer is A, it was odd. It mentioned about, in the poem, it mentioned about something it says here about perfume. There was something there that mentioned about while perfume and dark petals thundered slowly. So that's an indication that the speaker was odd. Let's go on to 23. It says, the mood of stanza one of the poem is, is it A, bleak, B, lonely, C, bland, or D, desolate? We know it is A, bleak. It's not, it's not one that is looking good at all. So bleak is our answer. 24, the speaker's attitude to the environment in the first stanza is one of A, misery, B, realism, C, resignation, or D, resentment. We know it is resentment. It was very, very bitter. Because if you look here, it mentioned that from the beginning, my world has been a place of pothole streets where thick sluggish gutters race. And it, the list goes on and on and on. And it mentioned dull gray squalor, sick dust, and so on. So we know it was one of resentment. 25 says, what device is used in line 11 to describe the part? Line 11. Let's go back and look at line 11. So 11 says, came stark glory like lightning in the dark. So what do we realize here? It is 
a simile comparing one thing to another the word like is being used there 26 says the device used in line 12 compares the beauty of flowers to or answer C lightning let's move on to 27 which of the following best describes the theme of the poem we know it is a is it a nature is vital part of human life b the impact of nature is positive and deep c plants and flowers brighten the human experience or d nature specifically parks should be introduced in all slums we know it is b the impact of nature is positive and deep. 28 says the use of stark glory line 11 best suggests that the flowers one stimulated the speaker with their beauty two had a religious significance to the speaker. Three, amazed the speaker with the difference they made. So we know that it is one and three only. So that is B. He did not mention A had a religious significance to the speaker. So that's not so much. That's not a best description. So one and three. Let's go to 29, items 29 to 39, the instruction says, read the following extra carefully and then answer items 29 to 39 on the basis of what is stated or implied. There were three chimpanzees. I came to know them well. They were young and nibble, nimble, yet with that over-anxious, ancient of days, expression of their kind, they would play for hours around a sapling outside my door climbing and falling and wrestling with the exaggerated and over-empathic tumbling of professional acrobats. It was impossible to believe in their navete, so obviously did they show off to any passer-by. They developed for myself first a powerful curiosity, which caused them to peer forever through a window wrapped around each other in intricate patterns and then i rather believe a certain affection or at least tolerance at which stage they would knock on the door to be admitted i came to feel very warmly about the apes they would sit for hours on the floor beside my doorway embracing each other with their six dark sorrowful eyes fixed intently upon me if I turned a page or crossed my legs, they would stir quietly, nudging each other. To change my trousers in these circumstances, because also an embarrassment, so intense was the process observed. There was one genuinely startling moment. I was working beside the window, grinding out from the typewriter, whatever contemporary nonsense was required. In fact, a fragment of this book, when I glanced around and there were the chimpanzees in a row by the doorway, beating out a ragged tattoo with their fingers on the floor, a very reasonable imitation. The chimpanzees showed interest in the mechanics of writing, more so in the process of drawing. One evening when I was sketching in the plantation, I felt those question reflective eyes on me again and a group of leathery fingers reached out gently for the crown. It occurred to me that whatever the chimpanzee did with it would scarcely be more futile than what I was doing myself, and I surrendered it. The effect was gripping. To begin with, the chimpanzee darted and slashed at the paper in an uncontrolled way, tearing the sheet, sometimes missing it altogether. Surprisingly, Soon a kind of intention came over him, and on the third or fourth fresh lead, he began to draw. There is no other word to describe what, in fact, the ape was doing. So question 29 says, when the writer says it was impossible to believe in their naivete, lines four to five, he means that he found it hard to believe that the chimpanzees were with our answer. We know it is C, 
unintentionally showed off their skills to any passerby. 30 says, which of the following phrases is used to compare the chimpanzees with professional acrobats? Or answer D, wrapped in intricate patterns, line seven. 31 says, when the writer says that he came to feel very warmly about the apes, line nine, he means that he, A, developed a genuine liking for the chimpanzees. 32 says, the genuinely startling moment referred to in line 14 was caused by the D, writer's discovery of the chimpanzee sitting in a row in the doorway. 33 says, a ragged tattoo line 16 to 17 means the same as, no, ragged means something that is irregular in, in, in the context in which it is used here. And tattoo means to beat or to tap. So therefore, our answer would be D, an irregular tapping. CXC has made this a, a lot more clearer. In a previous past paper, the answer was somewhat vague and you had to select the right answer. But this day gives us the two correct um, words to explain the meaning. 34 says, when the writer says that the chimpanzees showed interest in the mechanics of writing line 18, he means that they, A, looked at the way the typewriter worked. 35 says, as used in line 19, question means the same as, we know that is C, being inquisitive in the context that it is used in the passage. 36 says, the writer sur surrendered the crayons to the chimpanzee because he, or answer B, felt that the chimpanzee could do no worse than himself. 37 says, we can infer from the effect was gripping line 22 that the author was B, interested in finding out what the chimpanzee would do next. 'Cause if you look someone you may quickly say, Oh, he was impressed or amazed. But if you look, it was not he did not mention that he was amazed at the drawings created by the chimpanzee because the chimpanzee did not um according to the passage draw as yet. The effect the gripping effect he had was before that. And D impressed by the chimpanzee uncontrollable darting and slashing at the paper that came after. So those answers could not be selected if you look carefully in the passage. So the word gripping may cause you to use those words, but not in the context, in the other sentence, sentences. 38 says the passage can best be described as, we know that is a narrative. Some of you had commented earlier on on this and got it correctly. 39 says the writers uses the words would scarcely be more futile than what I was doing myself, line 21, to refer to A, his use of crayons. Let's go on to items 40 to 48. The instruction says, read the following passage carefully, select the correct option in each of items 40 to 48 on the basis of what is stated or implied. It says, the depths of the ocean are as secret, unexplored and challenging as the vast distances of outer space. The surface of the moon is far better known than the floor of the Atlantic. But here again, man is catching up with his mysterious inheritance. The voyage of Nautilus in 1959 was perhaps only a first elementary voyage of discovery into the deep vastness of the oceans of the world. The science of oceanography already foresees the day when we may travel as easily below as on the surface of the water. And it is not too fantastic to suppose that the aeroplane may eventually be superseded by the submarine liner 
as the safest form of world travel. It is fascinating to speculate upon the mass of material on the ocean's floors. In those deep, silent dungeons, what startling facts could be brought to light? What treasure for the historian and geologist? Practical man, however, regards the oceans as ample providers of food in a world of growing population. The sea is a colossal provider of food, particularly protein, so urgently needed by countless thousands of undernourished people. Biologists believe that the exploration of the sea is still at quite a primitive stage. The traveling fishing fleets are comparable to tribes of nomadic huntsmen, killing food where they find it, with no thought of conserving supplies for future generations. Modern trawlers indiscriminately scoop up vast quantities of immature fish, and there is a danger of many once abundant fishing grounds being turned into the marine equivalent of a dust bowl. If the fishing industries of nations were better controlled, the abundant supply of fish would be ensured. Scientists are only now beginning to realize the vast advantages of study and research. For example, control of the starfish population, which consumes 98% of the protein under the sea, would lead to spectacular results in the quality and quantity of the fish we need. Forty says, the writers refers to the oceans as mysterious line three because a man does not know what secrets lie within it. Let's go on to 41. 41 says the reference of the reference to the voyage of Nautilus line three is meant to b indicate how little exploration has taken place. Let's go on to 42. It says, the main intention of paragraph 1 lines 1 to 7 is to C, hint at the possibilities of ocean exploration. 43 says, the comparison of the ocean's floor to silent dungeons line 8 to 9 suggests that A, the ocean's floors are dark and conceal much. 44 says, according to the extract, the first step to be taken in harnessing the potential of the ocean is to, or answer D, increase scientific exploration and research. Let's go on to 45. It says, the writer believes that the ocean should be of interest to mankind because it, or answer D, has great potential for the provision of food. 46 says, which of the following statements is not suggested by the writer? It is B, nomadic tribes exploit the oceans. It did not say that in, if we look, if you remember in line 13, it, it, it made a comparison with, with traveling and fishing. So you can go back and look back in line 13. In fact, we can take a look back on it in line 13. It says here, the traveling, the traveling fishing fleets are comparable to tribes of nomadic huntsmen killing food where they find it. So that is not suggested by the writer. 47 says, the writer regards modern fishing trawler techniques as A, wasteful of fish, because it's scoop up all the tiny fish which could be left in the ocean to serve as food for people. 48 says, the passage deals mainly with, or answer A, untapped resources of the ocean. Let's go on to 49. 
Item 49 to 55, the instruction says, read the following advertisement carefully and then answer items 49 to 55 on the basis of what is stated or implied. So it says, Bermuda, before you, blue water, all the way to Morocco. Behind you, every care you ever had. Bermuda is a different island. It basks here in mid-ocean, remote, apart, unlike any other place. What little island do you know with dazzling white roofs to catch the rain, with pastel houses cut from coral rocks set in tropical green? Only Bermuda. What other island is ringed with such different beaches? Some wide and smooth, others with tiny covers hidden in cliffs waiting just for you? What other island can you roam on foot by ferry, motor, bike? or carriage stopping for a wayside picnic or to explore a vast cavern underground? Only Bermuda. Only one island of 21 square miles has 21 golf courses. Only one faraway island lets you skin dive in ancient Spanish shipwrecks or snorkel on a coral reef. Fish for Wahoo, Alice and Tuna, or the wily bonefish, or dine on rock fish, chowder and syllabub, then dance the night away with the limbo, calypso, or whichever. Bermuda, far away, long ago, old world, and 90 jet minutes from New York. Children love Bermuda and vice versa. Bring the family. Ask your travel agent in the US or Canada or write Bermuda, 610 5th Avenue, New York, 10020, number 6, Michigan Avenue, Chicago, 60602. So 49 says, the expression basque air in mid-ocean line 4 implies that D, Bermuda's position exposes it to the full rays of sun. For 50 cells, the use of the phrase is Bermuda, far away, long ago, old world, line 22, in this advertisement attempts to create the impression that Bermuda, our answer is B, has remained unchanged and unspoiled by technology. 51 says, which of the following statements is an opinion rather than a fact? Our answer is D. The architectural structure of Bermudan houses is attractive. So we know that that's not a view that everyone will adapt. So that's an opinionated statement. 52 says, from reading the advertisement, one can draw all of the following conclusions about Bermuda except... A. Bermudans are engaged chiefly in fishing and golfing. The writer in the passage didn't say that at all. He did not say that. 53 says, Which of the following techniques of persuasion does the writer use in this extract? We know it is, our answer is C, specific examples of Bermuda's attractiveness. If you remember in the extract, there were things that the writer used, like um, mentioned about dazzling white roofs. And for example, remember he said about like pastel houses and um, talks about the vast cavern along with others and it mentioned like golf course and so many others 54 says which of the following aspects of bermuda is emphasized we know that our answer is b uniqueness because you notice in the passage it mentioned unlike any other place and it is um it talks about the only one far away island yes so it's uniqueness 55 says which of the following devices is used extensively in the passage? All right. So we know it is C, repetition. 
I notice it, the passage it kept on it kept on mentioning kept on mentioning Bermuda, right? And it it talks about you know only Bermuda, and it talks about like only one. Those were some things, some words that was repetitively used. So repetition would be our answer. Item fifty six to sixty, the last questions. Now the instruction says read the following advertisement carefully and then answer items fifty six to sixty on the basis of what is stated or implied. National Youth Symposium 2015. The Adolescent Health, the Challenges, Obana, Obana Conference Center, Sunday, 8th of August, 2015. And it mentioned the sponsors, Ministry of Youth, Ministry of Education, National Council on Drug Abuse, Conference of Churches, the University Christian Council, the Muslim Youth Association, and Hindu Youth Council. And it mentioned who should attend, interested members of the public, members of youth groups, healthcare, healthcare professionals, students in medical sciences, media personnel. And it mentioned how you could attend. It mentioned the name of Yvonne Dalton and the telephone number and how you can complete the registration form. And it talks about different agencies and testimonial, testimonials and so on. So 56 says, according to the information provided, the main theme of the symposium is, we know it is about adolescent health. 57 says, which of the following groups is not a sponsor of the symposium? So we know B, Ministry of Health. That's not, if you look back here, it's not. It says Ministry of Youth Education, it mentioned the churches and so on. It did not mention Ministry of Health. 58 says, which of the following words can best replace symposium in the advertisement? So we know that it is B, conference. 59 says, how can those who want to participate register for the event? We know it did mention call the Ministry of Youth and speak to Yvonne Dalton. Final question says, all of the following groups are specifically invited to attend except C, parents of young people. So that is our answer for 60 C. So we have come to the end of the CSEC English A, May, June 2015, paper one. We have completed the paper now. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And thank you so much for watching.